Hi, Ben Carpenter here. I'm going to talk to you about medium chain triglycerides and coconut oil. So in the interest of keeping this video as concise and short as possible, I'm not going to talk about fatty acid composition of coconut oil. I'm not going to talk about metabolism of MCTs. I'm not going to talk about potential benefits of a diet rich in MCTs in terms of health. I'm strictly going to talk about body composition. So, first things first, coconut oil and MCTs aren't interchangeable. Coconut oil is often sold as a source of MCTs, but you can also buy MCT oil separately. MCT oil is sold as a fat loss supplement. So what we've got is a, is a wave of people who are adding MCT oil or coconut oil to their diet, hoping that this will promote greater weight loss. Now, this is what I'm going to examine. This is what I'm going to explain. Is it worth doing? For a lot of people, I think it's potentially, potentially a good idea with little downside. But for a lot of people, I think this is very misguided. And I'm going to explain why. So, first things first. There is research on MCTs raising energy expenditure and fatty acid oxidation as well as mixed research showing that it could help increase satiety, i.e. feeling of fullness. But on a calorie for calorie basis, is a diet richer in MCTs going to help promote weight loss? Now, if we look at a meta-analysis on this, a meta-analysis is basically a compilation of different randomized controlled trials or studies and looks at the results overall. So in a meta-analysis on MCTs and weight loss, it has been shown that diets richer in MCTs could help promote weight loss. Brilliant. This is what everyone knew. That's why they were adding MCT oil to everything and cooking everything in coconut oil, etc., etc. Not so fast. There is something that I feel that I need to explain, and this is the thing that I feel that people are missing. So... Most importantly, weight loss effects are mild at best. So this meta-analysis looked at, or, or it concluded, 0.51 kilos of extra weight loss, not necessarily fat loss specifically, but indiscriminate weight loss, over an average of a 10-week period. So you're looking just over an extra pound of weight loss over a 10-week period, i.e. very mild. Now, this is where things are going to get slightly complicated, but stick with me. If you're looking at a diet richer in MCTs, you have to compare it to an alternative diet to examine the effects, i.e. a control group. So if we give an example of some of the trials, group A and group B, both consume the same number of calories relative to body weight, both consume the same macronutrient ratio, i.e. in terms of protein, carbohydrates and fat, but one group within their fat content or fat intake, they will consume a source of MCTs and the other group will consume a different fat. So some of the fats that are used in the control group, beef tallow, soybean oil, rapeseed oil, mixed vegetable oils, olive oil, etc. So when comparing these on a calorie for calorie basis, the MCT content of the diet can vary dramatically, i.e. 2 grams up to 54 grams per day, depending on which trial you look at. But this is on a gram for gram basis, i.e. if you're consuming 30 grams of rapeseed oil or soybean oil or mixed vegetable oils, and you swap that for MCTs, you may get a slightly greater effect of weight loss. What this does not support is the addition of MCTs into your existing diet expecting greater weight loss. It's supporting the substitution if you're already consuming these, these alternative oils. So this is the mistake that people often make when consuming bulletproof coffee, i.e. they will add a source of calories to their diet, hoping that the increase in energy expenditure and fatty acid oxidation supersedes that caloric intake. But that just won't be the case. Yes, there's a raise in energy expenditure, but there's also a raise in caloric intake. And the raise in caloric intake will always go above and beyond that. So basically what I'm saying is if you're consuming 2000 calories per day and then you add in MCT oil 
as a source of additional calories and expect greater weight loss, you're doing it wrong. If you're on 2000 calories per day and you substitute some of the oils within that 2000 calories for MCT oil or coconut oil, you may get slightly greater weight loss. An important note within this is that some of the trials did have a high risk of bias, i.e. who was funding the study and the authors on the study. So yes, there may be a slightly greater effect on weight loss, but it is perhaps confounded by the fact that there is a financial interest within these trials. So it might help weight loss to a tiny degree. It's not going to be a massive degree. And the most important thing is this is in substitution for fat which is already in your diet. Do not add MCT oil on top of your existing diet, help, hoping that your fat loss will speed up. That is not how it works. That's what I think is misguided. So I hope that's cleared things up. I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any questions, please feel free to send them to me. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter personal training. And my Twitter and Instagram pages are both BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching. Bye.